So you want to experience a big motorcycle adventure, a trip to a foreign country, thousands of kilometers, exploring off the beaten path on gravel roads and off-road. And for that, of course, you need a big adventure bike with cutting edge technology. And here is why this is a profit oriented and dangerous marketing lie. And of that, welcome back to the Free Miles MC. So what does the term adventure bike actually mean? Adventure, if you look at the average advertisement for a bike like this, seems to be defined by riding off-road and on gravel roads. And to do that, you apparently need a top-of-the-line engine with loads of power and loads of electronics to help your explorer desires. So how much of this actually holds up with the reality of a big motorcycle trip? So first of all, let's talk about power. If you look at a bike like this, um, those middleweight bikes start at around 70 horsepower and the big ones have way over 100 horsepower. This for me begs the question, what is all that power for? If you would actually take this bike off road, like how do you want to get up a hill with more than 100 horsepower with that heavy of a bike? I think this would just lead to loads of wheel spin. You would be a lot better off with a motorcycle that has less power. And the companies that produce these bikes are aware of that. That's why those bikes have huge electronic packages to kind of dial this power back to make it manageable for your average rider and to prevent them from yeeting themselves off the road. All those added electronics, of course, make the bikes that are already quite heavy because of their big engine even heavier. This kind of leads me to my next point. Many of those motorcycles are over-engineered because all those electronics can become quite hard to fix if they break. Those components can be very great when they work, but when they don't work, they can actually stop your adventure motorcycle trip thing. This doesn't just stop at the electronics. Also, many of these parts are quite hard to replace in a foreign country. Even though something like a cardan of a BMW GS can have many advantages, just imagine trying to get that thing replaced in the middle of Africa. I don't want to guess here, but I guess it takes quite a lot of time for that part to arrive from Munich all the way to where you are. And I'm kind of picking on the BMW GS here, but this kind of goes for all modern big adventure bikes. Also, often all these great features sacrifice a simplicity that is well needed on a trip like this just for features that look really great on a list. Picking again on the BMW GS, the new one, uh, who needs an electronic lifting kit for the suspension to make it easier to put the bike onto the center stand? If you're not physically fit enough to put your motorcycle onto the center stand, you should really consider if it's a good idea to tour and off-road that motorcycle. That nicely brings me to my next point. Let's talk about actual off-road use. I recently actually had a midweight adventure bike on the channel and I very quickly discovered those bikes are way too heavy. Even turning around on a normal forest road can become quite the headache as it's just too much weight to pull and to push forward. Those motorcycles can basically only be comfortably turned around with the power of the engine. And for a move like that, I personally miss the skill to do that on a bike consistently, where if I drop it, I have to pay for it. So I only can do that sometimes on my personal motorcycle. And it's not just the weight of the bike itself, it's also how the weight is positioned. Uh, for the sake of quite high ground clearance, the weight is very up at the top of those motorcycles. And I have a little bit of a controversial opinion on this. In my opinion, a decently off-road capable bike doesn't necessarily need huge ground clearance. So in my opinion, you could go with a very much lower center of gravity because uh, a motorcycle with less ground clearance still has an incredible approach angle and departure angle when you look at the trails you are realistically going to be riding that are also open in national parks. Also because motorcycles in general have a very short wheelbase, the brake over angle is also quite good. Of course with less ground clearance you are going to have more issues on single tracks and that's not going to work that well, but who seriously wants to take a motorcycle with more than 200 kilos on a single track? And even if you want to do that, that's how that works on my naked bike. And I would say that looks all right for the things that you are going to do with a touring motorcycle. On top of that, if the center of gravity would be lower, this bike would be way easier to maneuver and to handle in difficult situations. 
for example, uh, if I on my naked bike have off-road problems and the bike starts to tip over, I can still catch that bike around the height of my knee. That's how far the bike can tip over where I can still hold it. Um, as you see here, if this would be a big adventure bike, this situation would have been over already seconds before it came that far. As you're just not able to hold a motorcycle with that high center of gravity. And when then a big adventure bike lays on its side, good luck lifting that thing. Those bikes weigh quite a lot of weight and you could lift this motorcycle on your own on easy terrain and with that I mean asphalt. And you could maybe lift it a few times, but as soon as you go off-road and have to lift it repeatedly, that's when stuff really becomes difficult. And in general, there is this technique how you can lift a bike and many people say, oh, then it's so easy and then th there's this trick and then you can very easily lift a motorcycle. That's bullshit. Th this technique is the only way you can lift a motorcycle. And believe me, after two to three times of doing that, you're done. Not thinking of a scenario like lifting this motorcycle in the sand on an uphill incline. To make this whole off-road matter worse, those motorcycles don't come ready for off-roading from the shop, which you would think. The tires, even if they're something like uh, Pirelli Scorpion tires, kind of suck for off-roading. Those tires look quite knobbly, but they cannot handle sand and mud at all. When testing an ADV bike a, a few weeks back, I already had quite a big issue when turning around and driving into a mud puddle. So if you actually want to take this motorcycle on your big off-road adventure, you would need at least better tires and crash bars, because the reality of off-road riding is that you are going to fall. So let's ignore all the obvious off-road issues and just imagine for a moment that this bike can perform all these things that the advertisement promises here. How good would the actual usability of a bike like this would be? So in your day-to-day -day life, you of course also want to then explore a little bit your surrounding on that bike. Uh, those bikes are targeted towards the American market and the European market mostly, I would say. Here in Europe, in many countries, off-roading is illegal. Also going on gravel roads in many cases is illegal as those roads are restricted to agriculture use. And even if you then find a road that you can go on, which they, they do exist, uh, you then will have to deal with hikers. And for some reason, hiking just attracts the wildest people that think they're Liam Neeson as soon as they see a motorcycle or even a mountain biker. And that is a level of stress that is just very unpleasant. And I think everyone who has ever taken a bike to places like that, they can tell you about it. It just really sucks. So you cannot even really benefit from the bike where you live unless you take it to a proper enduro park. So let's talk touring. Of course, then when you're on the big tour, you're going to do loads of gravel roads and off-roading, right? Mm, not that much. The reality of tours looks quite a lot different. You're mostly going to be on roads actually because you're going to tour first through all the countries where often off-roading is even forbidden. And then even if you are in a country where this country kind of forces you to go on gravel roads because it's the only option, that's still very rarely the case. And even if you then have to go on these gravel roads, those gravel roads can be done by basically any other bike as well. I do those motorcycle touring videos on my YouTube channel because I'm actually trying to build a career out of this. And I have to say, I did about 2% of gravel road and off-road riding in the last year for this YouTube channel. And for me, it would not be worth getting an ADV bike because a sport tourer would always be the more capable bike for me as I am mostly on road due to the nature of being on a big tour. And if you then go off-road, it doesn't really often serve a purpose on that tour. It's just for a little bit of exploration and kind of half-forced adventure. And it's often not even all that fun. After just having stated that in many cases, this bike from a usability standpoint would not make sense for adventure touring, uh, let's talk about the price you're actually going to pay for this. So adventure bikes start roughly at 10,000 euros when you're talking about something like a Tenere. Um, and then of course you still have to get all the bells and whistles to actually off-road the thing. And one of the bigger bikes, something like a BMW GS, can cost you up to 33,000 euros. That is just insane. And quite honestly, if you plan on doing an actual big trip and experience an adventure on your motorcycle, please just spend that money on a trip. And if you look at the content of the video until now, I've been mostly complaining about false promises of the marketing here. And 
the marketing basically doesn't sell you a motorcycle. It sells you a feeling, the feeling of being an adventurer. This is bullshit. You're not going to be more of an adventurer or less of an adventurer with this bike. So let's say you're still getting one of these bikes for this money and actually use them how they are advertised. This will lead to those bikes dropping dramatically in value like a stock market crash. Because just imagine, just imagine you go out, buy a new BMW GS and then actually take it touring. How many kilometers will you do in the span of two years? That is for a motorcycle probably an insane amount of kilometers and those will not be the easy kind of kilometers you do from home to your job. Those will be off-roading, then all the things that come with off-roading, uh, wear on all the different bearings. Those things need to be serviced. So the cost of service automatically through proper use becomes quite high. When going off-road, you of course have things like crashes and the general wear and tear of doing that. And then of course you also have difficult conditions like sand, river crossings, salt on the road in the winter, all that stuff. I would say that you can turn a top of the line adventure bike kind of worthless in the span of two years with this. Just imagine all the things that my Yamaha XJ has been through on this channel. Think about doing that to a new GS and then trying to resell it at your local BMW dealer. Also something that many people forget, many of those bikes quickly become write-offs when you use them like this. When going to a country that can be quite difficult to manage on a motorcycle like Iceland and then on the way back on the ferry, uh, basically it becomes a middle-aged emotional support club uh, for people who just totaled their bikes. Because uh, after a trip like this, you see many bikes totaled. On my way back from Iceland, I saw many Africa twins with bent frames and broken frames. BMW GSs that crashed in the wind of Iceland and then got pushed from the wind over their own tank. X capes with broken engines and broken transmissions. All that stuff. Many people that I have met on my trips have spent on a big ADV bike that was already used more than 12,000 euros and then totaled their bikes. And honestly, that does not sound like a good experience. And I think, well, rather than giving you a great adventure, make you quite sad. So please don't do that. And now we get to my biggest complaint around ADV bikes. The marketing for ADV bikes sells a dangerous and potentially life-threatening promise that just straight up is not true. If you look at the commercials for these bikes, these commercials promise you that you can somewhat decently maneuver those bikes in those terms and in those conditions. With all the things I said until now, it should be quite obvious that that is straight up not true. On top of that, many places where those commercials are filmed and also that are desired by the motorcycle travel community are quite hostile to humans when, from the standpoint of how their nature there is. And this combined with potentially not being able to lift the bike when it falls, potentially breaking your body from the weight of the bike crashing on top of you and you getting stuck with this bike creates a very dangerous mix. It is not impossible to fail a river crossing in Iceland and drown or then freeze to death or shatter your leg in a desert and then die of heat stroke and thirst. If you actually look at videos where people take big adventure bikes to something like a desert, it often gives me personally a quite uneasy feeling in my stomach because uh, you instantly realize from your human senses that this is just not a good idea. So those false promises can leave you in very vulnerable situations. I think this is just a bit immoral because those advertisements open up the possibility of the customers that buy these motorcycles and want to do these tours potentially succumbing to nature because of the thing they think they can do with that bike. So all in all, I think this is quite a big difference between what you expect from this motorcycle, what is promised by the marketing and how it actually looks. Also, the wildest thing about this in general is adventure bikes, so per se, exist. There are bikes that you can actually take on these adventures as a normal person and be a lot safer on and have a way better time. Those bikes are just straight up called dual sports and slowly they're being more marketed as small adventure bikes but due to them not having all the top of the line engines and electronic bells and whistles they are not as profitable as something as a big adventure bike. With this hyper fixation of adventure having to be off-road uh, those bikes could actually kind of back that up if you try to go over the Trans Europe Trail or some other off-road adventure, those bikes are light enough to be actually maneuverable there. 
without having some crazy amount of skill. Of course, still some skill is needed, but you get what I'm saying. It's a difference between 160 kilo and 200 something. On top of that, those bikes are way cheaper or you can get them with similar power to 70 horsepower, something like the new gas gas, but then they're probably just as pricey in the end. And yeah. Um, and also many of the Japanese bikes and older motorcycles are easier to fix there on location. And it's probably also easier to get your hands on parts for those bikes there. So all in all, what do I want you to take away from this video? I want to make you aware of that this whole adventure bike thing, how it is presented is bullshit. Uh, this is not how this actually works. If you want to do stuff like that, rather spend money on doing the trip yourself. And we are way more satisfied probably with a bike that is basically less. Either with a used bike that then has off-road capability that is similarly bad, but at least it doesn't have that much electronics and the center of gravity is lower, or with an actual dual sport. Just don't fall for this whole adventure bike touring, exploring the wilderness stuff. In general, all this contact between adventure and off-road doesn't make all that much sense to me. I think if you are looking into an adventure bike and want to get that bike for the body position and for doing those huge tours, maybe you should look into a sport tour. One of those big BMW K somethings. They look a bit big and bulky, but I think they probably would make a lot more people happy than adventure bikes that are being sold today. When you do your trips, even with the crazy expectations that often come with a trip like this, look after yourself. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe and ring the bell and see you next time.